So, do you ever have those moments, those times, where you wonder what time it is from God's eternal perspective? Jesus clearly taught that there will be a time where God will wrap everything up. When life as you know it and I know it and we know it will come to an end. And I'm not just talking our death, should he wait, but all of life in the universe as we know it coming to an end. And at that time, the Bible teaches that Christ will return, the one through whom all things were made, the holy and perfect and all-powerful Creator will make the scene and stand before you and I and all of us, and we'll stand before him, and he'll look at us in the eye and judge. And when that happens, in that moment, we will see Jesus Christ for who he is, and regretfully, and joyfully, and frighteningly, we will see ourselves for who we are. We'll know how we've lived. Everything will be fully known. And then, the Bible teaches, we'll be changed. The Bible describes the end of the age as tumultuous, unearthing, and dreadful. And Jesus himself spends most of the chapter of chapter 24 in the Gospel of Matthew, explaining it this way. A bit of a long text, but listen to his words. Later, as Jesus was sitting on Mount Olives, his disciples approached him and asked him, tell us, when are these things going to happen? You hear about the end of the age, you want to know when, (laughs) so that you can get ready, right? What will be the sign of your coming that the time's up? And Jesus said, watch out for doomsday deceivers. Many leaders are going to show up with forged identities, claiming I am the Christ, the Messiah. They will deceive a lot of people. When reports come in of wars and rumored wars, keep your head and don't panic. This is routine history. This is no sign of the end. I imagine people in World War II or any major war thought this is it. And it wasn't, he said. It wouldn't be. Nation will fight nation, and ruler fight ruler over and over. Famines and earthquakes will occur in various places like Nepal and others. This is nothing compared to what is coming. They are going to throw you to the wolves and kill you, everyone hating you because you carry my name. And then, going from bad to worse, it will be dog eat dog, everyone at each other's throat, everyone hating each other. In the confusion, lying preachers will come forward and deceive a lot of people. For many others, the overwhelming spread of evil will do them in. Nothing left of their love but a mound of ashes. Staying with it. That's what God requires. Stay with it to the end. You won't be sorry and you'll be saved. During this time, the good news, the message of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, will be preached all over the world a witness staked out in every country, and then the end will come. But be ready to run for it when you see the monster of desecration set up in the temple sanctuary. The prophet Daniel described this. If you've read Daniel, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you're living in Judea at the time, run for the hills. If you're working in the yard, don't return to the house to get anything. If you're out in the field, don't go back and get your coat coat. And pregnant nursing mothers will have it especially hard. Hope and pray this won't happen happen during the winter or on the Sabbath. This is going to be trouble on a scale beyond what the world has ever seen or will see again. If these days of trouble were left to run their course, nobody would make it. But on account of God's chosen people, the trouble will be cut short. If anyone tries to flag you down, calling out, here's the Messiah, or points, there he is, don't fall for it. Fake Messiahs and lying preachers are going to pop up everywhere. Their impressive credentials and dazzling performances will pull the wool over the eyes of even those who ought to know better. 
but I've given you fair warning. So if they say, run to the country and see him arrive, or quick, get downtown, see him come, don't give them the time of day. The arrival of the Son of Man isn't something you go to see. He comes like swift lightning to you. Whenever you see crowds gathering, think of carrion vultures circling, moving in, hovering over a rotting carcass. You can be quite sure that it's not the living Son of Man pulling in those crowds. Following those hard times, sun will fade out, moon cloud over, stars fall out of the sky, and cosmic powers will tremble. And then the arrival of the Son of Man and it will fill the skies. No one will miss it. Unready people all over the world, outsiders to the splendor and the power, will raise a, raise a huge lament as they watch the Son of Man blazing out of heaven. And at that same moment, he'll dispatch his angels with a trumpet blast summons, pulling in God's chosen from the four winds, from pole to pole. And then the parable. Take a lesson from the fig tree. From the moment you notice its buds form, the merest hint of green, you know summer's just around the corner. So it is with you. When you see all these things, you'll know he's at the door. Don't take this lightly. I'm not saying this for some future generation, but for all of you all of us. This age continues until all these things take place. Sky and earth will wear out. My words won't wear out. But the exact day and hour of the end, no one knows that. Not even heaven's angels, not even the Son. Only the Father knows. So how will you know? How, how will we know? We'll know. Like how you know that summer is coming right now as you see all of these buds on all of these trees and bushes just exploding in our city all around you. All around you. And in a bud-like way, this sounds odd, felt odd in the writing, I think it's going to feel natural almost an organic kind of knowing. I suppose that the end of the age and the coming into fullness of the kingdom of God, by definition, would be the most natural and organic and, of course, kind of thing that could ever happen in the cosmos. It's going to be shocking and unsettling and cause us to squirm and run and flee and suffer. But it's what happens with creations made by God. They come to an end, and then they burst into bloom. Trees bud, and so do heavenly kingdoms. And this time of waiting, of wanting, of crying out for more, this this tightly bound, like a little bud that's not even close to bursting yet, this pregnant time of pain and suffering, it, it will, of course, lead to a budding and then a blooming of something new. Even as that is part of the nature of a tree or anything that's in bud right now, it's part of the nature of God's kingdom plan. So at the end there's going to be a dreadful, joyful, dreadful sense of, yep, I knew it. To be made by God for that day is to have an innate memory of and knowing of the future coming of this day. I knew it. I knew it deep inside of me. I knew this was going to happen one day. It will fill the skies. No one will miss it. 
unready people all over the world, outsiders to the splendor and the power, will raise a huge lament as they watch the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, blazing out of heaven. No one will miss it. It is unstoppable, inevitable, irrefutable. It will happen everywhere. It will be ubiquitous. You can't miss it. Kind of like the, I don't know, I tried to calculate it this week. How many billions of buds are bursting into bloom over the last three weeks in, in our city alone, let alone in God's good world? I mean, that everywhere, that unavoidable And even though a bud is such a small and tiny thing, you can rip it off a tree in it. There's no way anyone on the face of the planet can stop spring from happening. So there is an inescapable sense to this coming end of the age that Jesus teaches about. Just like there's an inescapable sense of summer coming when you see a bud on a tree as you walk away from church this morning. The real question in telling this is, are you going to feel busted or are you going to feel thankful? Are you going to run away from it or are you going to be so, so filled with gratitude that that day has finally come and who you are is finally going to come into fullness and and the pain and the sorrow and the burdens will be laid down for a final time. Will there be joy, full anticipation, or dread and fear? Kingdom come is unavoidable. It'll be all around you. So if they say, run to the country and see him arrive, or quick, get downtown, see him come, don't give them the time of day. The arrival of the Son of Man isn't something you go to see. He comes like swift lightning to you. He'll be all around us and known for who He is everywhere. You'd no sooner run to see a returning Christ than you would run to any other part of the city to see a tree in bud <laughs> because it's happening right in your own yard, in your own neighborhood, right in front of you. And you'll know, you'll know what time it is and what's happening like you know that summer is coming when you see a tree and bud. And what will that knowing be like, thinking a little more deeply about it or abstractly about it? I think the knowing will be like a tree bud in its whispering, foretelling sense of almost thereness. Yeah, this is what I do, eh? Come up with a sentence like that on a Thursday morning. <laughs> whispering. It's prophetic in a way. It's, it's not there yet, but it's, it's almost there yet. The poet Philip Larkin wrote, The, the trees are coming into leaf like something almost being said. It'll have that sense to it. From the moment you notice its buds form, the merest hint of green, Jesus said, you'll know summer's just around the corner. So it is with you. When you see all these things, you'll know he's at the door. And even as it's all there in a bud, still embryonic, still so tightly compressed and small, it's already there as well. It's prophetic. It's foreshadowing. It's hopeful. It's green. And you know, hell may be breaking out all around you in your life, Relationally, your marriage is done, your kids are ignoring you, you're, you've been rejected by that person, that group, that employer. Economically, things are falling apart. Psychologically, you don't know what to do. Physiologically, you've discovered you've got cancer, you're dying. 
All that could be happening, but you will still, in seeing that little bit of green in a bud, know. So last spring, at about this time, maybe three weeks before this time, I'm walking through my neighborhood, and there's this one tree. I don't know what kind of tree it is, but when the leaves and the buds are just starting to open up, it's just co they're covered in sap. Like, I feel bad for each bud. There's no way those buds are going to overcome the stickiness of the sap. And I remember walking by, praying for a friend who had tried to commit suicide and was depressed and down, and I took a picture of the bud, just all stuck together, right? And I said, you know, I'm looking at this, and I'm thinking about you, and this is probably where your life is right now, but it's not done yet, right? This is a kind of an end of the age for you, place that you're in, but... And, and they say with a, with a butterfly that, you know, same stickiness, right, coming into its fullness. And if you were to cut the stickiness away, the butterfly's wings would never open up. Like, you need that kind of sticky resistance in order for a full blooming, full flight, full life, a full opening up of who you are to, to, to the light to happen. A message of hope in a little leaf in bud. The, the promise of life in something not fully there yet. A, a truth that seems so near but still seems a little bit far off. Something that you get the sense that you can know, but you really can't know it fully, how it all works. In his book, Jesus Through Middle Eastern Eyes, theologian Kenneth Bailey talks about the paradoxical nature of the kingdom of God. We're talking about one part of that kingdom narrative and story. And Bailey said this, and I read it after down uploading 20 photos. I'd just been out uh, taking pictures of little buds, right? So all these buds and images and colors were in my mind, and I'm thinking about them in the nature of your kingdom, God, and how it all works. And then I read his words, and all the images are just running through my mind and imagination. In the New Testament, the kingdom is affirmed to have come, and yet it lies in the future. It's just about to happen and still far off. There are signs little bits of green all over the place. But the timing of the fulfillment of the kingdom is to us unknown and unknowable. Surely, Jesus, the one through whom all things were made, fig trees and buds and every tree and every bud, knew what he was doing and saying, this is a pointer to the nature of my kingdom and its foreshadowing of something coming, and, and its beautiful, hopeful, one day to bloom, greenness as well. And that greenness, in another part of the Bible, 1 Corinthians 15, will be so beautiful. But let me tell you something wonderful, a mystery I'll probably never fully understand. We're not all going to die, but we're all going to be changed. You hear a blast to end all blasts from a trumpet, and in the time that you look up and blink your eyes, it's over. On signal from that trumpet from heaven, the dead will be up and out of their graves, beyond the reach of death, never to die again. And the same moment, at the same moment, and in the same way, will all be changed. In the resurrection scheme of things, this has to happen in the resurrection scheme of things. Everything perishable taken off the shelves and replaced by the imperishable. This mortal replaced by the immortal. 
And then the saying will come true. Death swallowed up by triumphant life. Who got the last word, O oh death? O oh death, who's afraid of you now? All things made new, eternally new, everlastingly new, kingdom come. And you and I and we and everything else will become fully itself. The world will burst into bloom. The cosmos will. And turn toward its light, its maker, and be fully itself the way God has always planned for it to be. Just like spring precedes summer, of course this is where it's going to go. Just like how a lilac in bud, those tiny little clusters of buds become these beautiful purple claims to glory, pointers to the love of God. And it'll be very messy. Your messiness is a, is a foretaste, is a, gives you a sense of the messiness at that time, before the blooming happens. Trouble on a scale before, beyond what the world has ever seen or will see again. So messy. But the beauty is coming. Look around you. In fact, it's already there in bud. Like kind of how it was already there when Jesus was dying on a cross. It was already there. There was a little bit of green and hope and future and life even there. Oh, death, where's your sting? We don't yet see things clearly. We're, we're squinting in a fog, but peering through a mist, but we're still in bud, but, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright, and we'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him, directly, just as he knows us. And we'll know him in a fully bloomed kind of way, whatever that is going to be like. And maybe in that time we'll be able to look back and see all those glimmers of green and all of the ways God was preparing and working and moving in you and in us and in all of this when it was all so tightly compacted and not fully there yet. And surely we'll know that all of the blooming really had nothing to do with us any more than a tree or a lilac bush or anything that buds in this world is, can get credit for a bud happening. So too we'll know that this life is a grace and a gift given through faith and the love of God made manifest in Christ. I've been walking around all week just realizing how unmerited spring is and how that must be a pointer to how it's going to feel so natural, organic, upending, and new what God has planned for you. And all he calls you to do and everything he calls you to give to be ready for that day is to do what branches do and trees and bushes do. Stay rooted. Stay connected to. Let what God has built into his world and what flows naturally out of himself, the love of Christ, flow in and through and to you. Let's pray. So, Lord, help us to live uh, with the end in mind. Not just for the... Uh, 
the sense of holy fear and dread and falling shortness that, that comes when we think of a day like the day we've been talking about, but help us to also live in, in the hope of that and with the sure knowledge that the one who judges is the one who saves, is the one who loves, is the one who came, is the one who warns, is the one who is the embodiment of grace and mercy and forgiveness and truth. And in knowing you in all of those ways, help us to have faith and trust and hope for that day. And as we go out this week, this afternoon, as we walk, as we walk by so much of your beautiful, hopeful green in our world, whisper through these buds and speak to us. Compel us to turn our hearts to you, to consider the time, to consider what a life is meant to be and who you've called us to be and, and to live more fully in response we pray. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.